I am willing to bet my left pinky finger that the source of your coolant think, I said coolant finger. Do you have a coolant leak on your 3.5 liter EcoBoost? If so, stick around to find out the most common places they leak. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Mason and I am a Ford technician here at the Steelership. At this channel, I do my best to bring you content that will help you fix your vehicle or at least understand the repairs that are being made to your vehicle. So now that you know who I am and why I'm standing up here talking to this camera, let's get into this 3.5 liter EcoBoost most common coolant leaks. Coolant leaks are a very, very common issue on the 3.5 and the funny part about it is 90% of the time it's the same leaks over over and over, actually not 90%, 100% of the time, it is the same exact leaks over and over and over again. My goal here is to tell you the most common places that they leak. She don't wanna be on camera. We've, we've come to know each other on these late nights. She's cleaning, I'm up here recording videos. You wanna be in the YouTube video? Nobody wants to be in my YouTube video. The number one most common coolant leak I see on the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is the water pump. Yep, Ford water pumps, they don't mix. I don't know who builds their water pumps, but they need to swap, they suck. Water pump usually leaks from the weep hole right up under the water pump pulley. This can be very, very hard to see because it's located under 97 charged air pipes that they had to route in every which way direction like a spider web. Can't really see the front cover real well, but what you will notice is if it's leaking really bad, you'll see a wet spot or possibly like some corrosion looking stuff on the front cover coming right down behind the harmonic balancer. I usually look right above the harmonic balancer to see if I see anything wet because anytime there's anything wet right there at the harmonic balancer, your water pump is almost always going to be the source of that coolant leak. It's also worth noting that that if you put dye in this cooling system, I'll link some up below. I've made a couple videos on dye before. It really, really helps with identifying leaks. It'll be nice fluorescent green where you can see it really well. So if you're having a tough time deciding if your water pump is actually the source of your leak, add some dye to it. That will really, really assist you in making sure your water pump is the problem. So you've diagnosed yours and you've seen that the water pump is indeed the source of your coolant leak. How hard is this water pump to replace? First, I need to explain that there are some differences in the water water pumps based on your model. The 11 to 16 water pump is a good bit different than the 17 up water pumps and this is going to apply to any 3.5 EcoBoost. The, the naturally aspirated engines, I made videos on those as well. They're actually located inside the timing cover. It's a timing chain drove water pump. So they're not going to be the same. Any 3.5 EcoBoost in an Expedition or F-150 is going to have this same water pump. So the 11 to 16s are a uh, different looking style. They actually have uh, some different mating spots for where the water pump bolts up on that front cover. The 11 to 16 water pump, in my opinion, is a lot harder to replace than the 17 up. I've actually found some shortcuts where on the 17 ups where you don't even have to remove any of those charged air pipes or pretty much anything other than a couple hoses to access that water pump and remove it. It's really, really not that bad. It's in a tight spot, so it can be um, aggravating. I usually cut my hands up real bad trying to remove the water pumps on the 17 ups, but the 11 to 16s are way, way harder. You're gonna have to remove a bunch of those charged air pipes and you're gonna have to deal with the long, pipe that runs up under the intake that runs to the, the, the um, I don't even know what it's called, the crossover on the back of the heads. You're gonna have to fight that pipe. It's gonna be in your way the whole time. And those charged air pipes are not fun at all to try to get off of this engine. It's also worth noting that they updated the pumps on the 11 to 16s somewhere. Don't really know where. I think it all depends on the build date of the engine, not the truck. It's the build date of the engine. And the only thing they changed is the exact same water pump, except they went from a four bolt water pump pulley to a three bolt. When ordering these water pumps for the 11 to 16s, they're gonna ask you if it's a three bolt pulley or four bolt pulley. What I can tell you is, is that if you order it like yours has a four bolt pulley, even if you have a three bolt, you will always, always get the right water pump. The only difference in the two boxes is the one that has a four bolt pulley is gonna come with a new pulley that only has three holes in it for the new water pump because all of the new water pumps that you're replacing or the 17 ups are all gonna be three bolt pulleys. Little quick snippet about the four bolt to three bolt 
water pump pulley, they actually made the same change for the 5.0 engine. So if you're ordering water pumps for 5.0s, they are gonna be the exact same way. If you have a four bolt pulley, you're gonna to need to order the pump with the three bolt pulley instead of the one that just comes with the pump. If you currently have a three bolt water pump on your 11 to 16, the part number is PW568 and that part brand new from Ford comes in at $173.64. If yours has the four bolt, this new water pump is gonna come as a three bolt. It's the same water pump in both boxes. The only difference is that it has the three bolt pulley you're going to need to reinstall the belt and the water pump on your engine. The part number for that one is PW569. That part, brand new from Ford, comes in at $145.64. So I'm not sure if you noticed when I was giving you the pricing, the one that you need for the four bolt pulley is actually about $30 cheaper. So no matter what pulley you have, I would order the pump that has the four bolt, it's for the four bolt, because it's going to come with a new pulley and a new water pump and for some reason it's $30 cheaper. It doesn't make sense. I've actually triple checked myself to make sure I'm right on that because I didn't want to tell you guys wrong. And you're positive on this, Jake, that these are the right prices. Three bolts is, is more expensive than a four bolt. Make sure before I tell these people this. Three bolt, five, six, eight. Four bolt, five, six, nine. That's crazy, man. You think, being they're putting an extra part, they're putting an extra a pulley in there with the water pump, you think that one would cost more, but it's actually the exact opposite. It's like $30 cheaper from Ford. So no matter what pulley you have, just tell them you have a four bolt and you're gonna get the right water pump with a brand new pulley for even cheaper than you're gonna pay for just that water pump. If you have a 2017 up 3.5 EcoBoost, the part number for yours, and I know this one by heart because I get to do cam phasers for a living, that's pretty much all I do. It is PW-602, and this bad boy comes in brand new from Ford at $130.91. Those of you unfortunates that the water pump was not the source of your coolant leak, I am willing to bet my left pinky finger that the source of your coolant leak, I said coolant finger, that the source of your coolant leak is coming from the turbo coolant fittings. I've talked about this, I've talked about it, and I've talked about it. These things are so common in leaking. I do them probably once a week for this issue. Coolant fittings on the turbos almost always start leaking before 150,000 miles. So obviously this is a very difficult job to do. Both turbos have to be removed to replace these coolant fittings. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, how do you diagnose this? The easiest way to diagnose this is to look under your vehicle. You're gonna wanna look up on the passenger side. Above the starter, you're gonna see a big oil feed pipe coming down off the turbo. This is usually where I see the coolant pile up when it's dripping you know it just kind of seeps it's not a real fast leak from these fittings it can take months before your coolant level will drop with this leak but that is primarily where i see the most coolant piling up is on that silver kinked oil return line that feeds down into your oil pan and it's also the same thing on the driver's side it's actually a little easier to see on the driver's side than it is on the passenger only other place i would say that i've seen them leak is the same exact fittings that go in the back of the cylinder heads where the lines run from both turbos into the back of the head you will sometimes see those fittings leak and when they leak you will see coolant dripping down around your bell housing. The analogy I use when I'm asked the question of should you replace both sides if only one is leaking is one shoe wears out. Are you gonna go buy one new shoe or are you gonna buy a pair? You're gonna buy a pair. If you're replacing one side, you should always be replacing the other. I'll also say I made a video a lot more in depth about this problem a while back. I apologize about the quality of that video because it was long time ago, didn't really know what I was doing, shooting off an iPhone. We now have a camera, but that video has some really good info about this issue. So I'll uh, throw it up here if you wanna go check that out for a little more deep dive into the turbo coolant fitting leaking on the 3.5 EcoBoost. It's also worth noting that they updated the fittings and the lines just like they did on the 6.7, except it took them a little bit longer on the EcoBoost. They did not update this until the engine change in 2017 when they went from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2, the ones that have all the phasers. They have a different style line that does not leak. This is a normal line that pops in with an O-ring. I have yet to see one of these leak. If you have a 17 up 3.5, you're not gonna have issues with your coolant fittings leaking on your vehicle. What all should you replace during this repair so you don't have more issues down the road that's going to cost you more money and labor because you got to completely start from scratch again? Me personally, I refuse to make a coolant fitting repair on a 3.5 EcoBoost without at least replacing the exhaust manifolds. It is so common of an issue for the back stud to break on the exhaust manifolds. Also made videos about this so I'll throw up here. I always, always, always replace the manifolds and 
the fittings at the same time on both sides. I will not do a vehicle that I am not able to do all of that at the same time because you're going to be mad at me thinking that I damaged or did not do something right to your engine. So we're just going to cut that out right off the rip and we're going to get everything we need to replace, replace while we're in there. So here's my list of everything I replace when doing a coolant fitting job. I'll also have this written down in the description for you if you wanna go check that out. So I replace all of the coolant fittings, all of the coolant lines, both oil lines, both oil supply line filters, turbo gaskets, exhaust manifolds, exhaust manifold gaskets, all of the exhaust manifold studs and nuts, and usually a new vacuum pump because they literally are always leaking. Also replace the turbo bolts, you want to get new turbo bolts because these are torque to yield and a lot of the time they will snap off in those manifolds. I also always, of course, change the oil after this repair and I put brand new fresh coolant in it so that you don't have rust and corrosion issues inside your engine down the road. Usually, depending on your area, this cost is going to vary a lot just depending on the amount of money you're paying for labor and how much each shop is going to charge you for this repair because there's really not a book time when you're doing several things at one time. You know, the manifolds might pay 12 hours, the fittings might pay 12 hours, I, I don't know, but they, they overlap a good bit. So I would say the average cost on this repair probably ranges somewhere in between $3,500 to probably upwards of $6,500, just depending on your area. So I would check with your local shops and your local dealerships to get pricing on this repair. All right, guys, you are now aware of the two most common coolant leaks on the 3.5 EcoBoost. 99% of the time when a 3.5 comes in, coolant leak, it is one of these two issues. The only other thing I will say that I've seen leak occasionally on uh, the 3.5, and this is across the board, it doesn't happen often, but sometimes you will see the quick connect fittings leak on heater hoses or other lines. The O-rings will deteriorate over time and start dripping and leaking under a lot of pressure. But 99% of the time, it is the water pump. And if it's not the water pump, it's usually the fittings if we're talking about the old style 3.5s. So I hope this video really helped you understand that. And if it did, I need a little bit of help from you. I need you to go down there and please, please, please press that like button. It is free and it is one of the easiest ways to support the Flying Wrenches channel. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Enough of this shit. I hit your red button. Okay, before you put that up there.